thought about it, because that's, that's a great question. I didn't even think about sort of that concept of it, is that even with 25 minutes and 75 more hours, which I guess is like 10 more days or give or take, right? Nine or 10 more days, we're still only in the middle of this group. Right. I mean, there's you know a district or two, and I don't know what the difference is between the middle and the top, but there are districts that are doing a lot more. And um, you know, I, I think this is a huge amount of progress that obviously took a lot of work and a lot of different fronts. Um, but it almost feels like we still have a lot way to go, you know? We should always be looking to increase instructional time if we can. If it's possible to do, we should try to increase instructional time. I mean, Agreed. you know, obviously there's a lot of arguments like, well, what are you going to do with the time, right? So obviously that's our responsibility to take, make sure that the time's valuable. But um, we have to make sure that we're trying to, you know, not, not that we want to have an eight-hour day or a nine-hour day for kids, but let's try to have, you know, anything we can do where we can make these, these small increases, maybe, you know, another go-around, maybe we get a little bit more time, something like that. Yeah, and this is, I mean, obviously, we talked about it, and I think the last meeting I was here in regards to, you know, the teachers and working with us to, I mean, this was an obviously, you know, a one-sided thing. I mean, obviously, had, everyone had to agree that the merit of increasing time for students and, you know, a lot of things, go, I said this the other day, but a lot of things goes to our negotiating team, but also to the teachers and the, seeing the value in this. It's important. Sorry to go off tangent, Mike. Not at all. Um, the other thing we discussed uh, on our committee meeting was uh, science materials adoptions. Uh, and Steve, I believe number four, is that the adoption of the new curriculum materials? Yes. Okay. So that's that's what number four is, is the, uh, we discussed exactly what <coughs> we were adopting and went through it uh, pretty thoroughly, so. And we shared with you the websites if you were interested in looking at what exactly you're getting for the cost. And we had the money budgeted for this year, so, and it came under budget. And this was uh, part of a larger um, multi-year curriculum analysis and revision. So uh, this was something that we were prepared for. It wasn't something that just popped up. So it's something that we're continuing to look at additional curriculum and material that we're uh, kind of uh, renewing and uh, getting new uh, material in. That was it for my report. And if there are no objections, I will move uh, items one through six as a block. You have a second for that? Second. Don? Yes, yeah. sir. He's on the ball. I think one, one piece of note here, I think, is uh, if you're following at home or uh, here in the audience, is uh, item number five, which I think shows a significant outlaying of funds from the district that go towards special education, uh, which is a, a variable that sometimes is difficult to hit and is obviously, uh, in many cases, very much needed. Uh, but that, I think, um, is a good example of how the district sometimes is uh, in, in dire straits because there's an out with district placement that costs us seventy or eighty or ninety thousand dollars that we can't necessarily budget for, and some things just don't go the way we want them to as a result. And uh, it just is. I wanted to highlight that because, uh, and it seems like sometimes you have a, a fairly significant budget, and you look at line like or lines like these, <clears throat> and it, it shows where we're out of control sometimes. Yeah, I, I, I read the numbers, it's funny you say that, 17 students, seven hundred and eighty, almost $783,000 in out-of-placement districts and a $30 million budget total. So um, obviously, like Dave said, needed for, for many of these students and, uh, and certainly the appropriate thing to do, but obviously from a financial standpoint, a big outlaying of uh, funds that are going to uh, uh, 17 students. So. Just, just to clarify, the, those, some of those are the same students because if you look, some are Summer. school year, then ESY. Okay. So okay. I, I believe the number is 11 okay. students, mm -hmm. and then some have the ESY. And some have the AIDS. And if you look at the big numbers, there's 11 big numbers, and then there's, then there's uh, six small numbers, so the six small numbers are the ESY. Gotcha. So. Smaller numbers, I should yep. say. But I think that proves your point. Uh, not proves your point necessarily, but yeah. emphasizes your point, right? It's even students higher amount per student. Yeah. yeah. And does it align to what we told everybody with the budget? I mean, we have a line item, right? Yeah, I don't remember what the line item was. For. We have a line item. These, these, um, the students that you see here are budgeted, but our budget for out of district placements as of 720 has been expended, meaning we don't have any other slots available for this I mean the money would have to come from somewhere else and that's actually there is there is a small number left due to the fact that one of the settlements ended up being about a third of what we budgeted so we do have some funds available for another one if that happens 
I say I thought it was my understanding that the state, or maybe it's changed, doesn't let you budget unless you actually have the student physically present. You can't say the trend is every year one more shows up, so we're going to put money aside so that we don't have to steal it from other places. But they said we're not allowed to do that. You can budget for like what you think is coming. Like in other well, words, you can now. I have no, I have this kid and he's in the works, so I'm going to budget for him. Oh. Yeah, not like just physically anything. here. Right. Right. You can't budget for a kid you don't know. Right, right. Yeah, because I thought I heard it one time, even if they're in early intervention and they tell you they're coming, if they're not physically in your district yet, you can't budget right. for it. Mm -hmm. It's scary. The, 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 the uh, number I was talking about was a budgeted student that the settlement ended up being right. a lot less. But, I mean, almost to Mariana. I'm, I'm just yeah. saying it, it's not, I mean, it's here tonight. We should definitely talk yeah. about it. It is a very large number, but it's not really a surprise because this is the same number we talked about basically yeah. in January, in February, and March, and yeah. when we put together the budget. Yeah, and I think it's, uh, but it, I mean, I don't know if you're making this point or not, Mariana, but I think it, it goes to emphasize the idea that, you know, one more student walking into the district who we weren't anticipating or who we felt maybe we could educate, but maybe we can't now. And now we have to pay for not a distant district well, replacement. It's like a sixty thousand. I think bill. that is important to make that they don't allow us to right. not have to then go steal from somewhere else. Right. Well, I mean, no, but in advance. But right. if it happens, then we have to. Right. If people. it happens, we have to, you know. So well, basically, what happens then is it stresses the budget. Yeah. Money, money, and discretionary items like computers and textbooks and pencils and things like that have to go have to be reduced and has to, the money has to be applied to the settlement. That's exactly what happens. Yeah. It, it also proves the dedication of, I think, the district to doing what's right for these particular students that need it. So it's, it really speaks to us saying if they need it. We have these conversations all the time and the, the bottom line is if, if a student needs out of placement district and it's the best thing for them, then we're going to support it and do the right thing. Yeah. Any other points of clarity, com uh, comments, questions about one through six. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Adamson? Yes. Mr. Capello? Yes. Mrs. Lindsay? Yes, except I will abstain on number five. The much debated number five. <laughs> Mr. Cass? Yes. Mrs. DeLuna? Yes. Mr. Napoloni? Yes. All right. Um, Barb, am I moving this through uh, policy? Sure. Um, I'd like to ask the board to review the list on the attached agenda for policy first reading and uh, vote to accept first reading tonight. There's a new org chart, substance abuse, bus driver responsibility, emergency school bus procedures, and an attendance policy right. So tonight when I brought up the school bus procedures one to discuss in transportation, Mr. Forte said that there wasn't time and that we, we would put them in committee to have discussions next month and then put them on. Right. Off on that these, were, these were all tabled last time. We left them on there so that we keep track of it. But there's no reason why all of these can't go into the committees for August if you want to. The only one I think we should move is, you know, the first one. Because the work chart because it's yeah. not a committee. It's already been done. The, um, I haven't read all the... Um, I was going to abstain on this because I haven't read all of these policies to be able to say one way or the other. I'm happy letting them go into committee and then coming back out if you guys are all okay with it too. Yep, that's the plan. Yeah, I have a couple have of questions. questions. Go ahead. Well, I have the same thing you are. I have some questions on some of them, so yeah. I have to do that. No, we should. Good. So I assume, for clarity's sake, um, policy and regulation 8630, is that coming to personnel because it talks about people or transportation because it talks about buses? I think I would have put it in transportation. Okay. And the other ones all are personnel, correct? Other than the org chart? Right. Because so it's staff and support staff. So that would go to personnel? Right. Okay. okay. So if I have questions on those, I can send them to the chair of personnel? Excellent. You may. I will send them. So awesome. I guess we'll change it to just the org chart. <laughs> for first reading. Adopt it. For number one. Yes. Right, do we have a second on that? For first reading for the org chart alone. I'll second that. Any comments or questions about the org chart or concerns about it, issues? Hey, just rather than send an email on the uh, substance and abuse, uh, I noticed, you know, reference to Jersey statutes would behoove us to put uh, federal in there also. Um, I mean, those are legal things that the, that the, that are that our uh, policy company writes, the lawyers for the policy company. I, I can ask them if they should put the, the federal in there. Well, 
you know, the, the way this state is, they could legalize marijuana right now, like they have in Colorado and a few other states, and it's still a federal crime. So, and I think federal law is supposed to trump state law on certain things. So, it may be worth, worth checking into uh, just to give us some more, you know, latitude where the state doesn't consider something substance abuse for the federal government. May, and we may, as a board, agree with the federal government, not the uh, state. I'll tell you, Don. There's a there's a lot of issues with that right now in regards to some of these states and some companies even that you know may restrict one sort of drug or not. In some states, allowing them and some others not. It's a whole thing that I'll tell you. No matter what we put down, we're not going to be right. Well, and in those four, the staff, the policy and regulations. One is for the staff, and one is for support staff. We just passed all of these a year ago, correct? I mean, they're all from May. 2014 and now they're changing it's you know and when you compare the two documents they look completely different but it's all it seems to me to be to add in vapors yeah vape that was in there i'm not sure about the that. original one i don't think no, so it no vapes <laughs> so i mean you know it's and we just went through all this so i wish they would get like the but you know it's if ethics keep shifting, why do we expect the rest of the law to stand still? What, is it, what do they say about what was the thing about ethics in New Jersey? Yeah, ethics in New Jersey is like shifting sand. <laughs> it's the, one. the one thing that you should consider rock solid. So any other questions about, uh, we're, so we're going to send all the others to uh, committee, but the first one, any questions about that one? The org chart? Yeah. All right, uh, roll call please on that. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Capello? Yes. Mrs. Lindsay? Yes. Mrs. Mr. Case? Yes. Mrs. DeLuna? Yes. Mr. Napoloni? I'm going to abstain that. Please. Uh, operations. Uh, you guys didn't do anything in operations. You didn't have time for transportation, you said, right? No, we had it. You want me to do transportation? Yeah, you do, please. Okay, so we met tonight and um, we talked about, right? I can talk about all of this. Um, that we have had now for the better part of well, all of this year, I believe, Jordan Consulting working with us, and right now we have the Transportation Department with some added clerical help working on getting the files the way Jordan thinks we should have them. So that's in process this summer. And we have some hard places to bus to that actually places in Denver where a bus can't possibly get and turn around that we're going to have to do aid in lieu to the parents instead of. And starting in September, um, do we need to vote on the, the transportation after our answering service, or? No, I just brought it up. Yeah. Okay, so everyone knows um, we will be expending $840 this year to get an after hours answering service for the transportation department so that since their day starts at, I don't know what time, six? Six. And really does end at three if you have an issue at four. We I don't cover know what to four. We, co we cover six okay, to so four. Okay, so we're six to four. If you have questions after that, we'll now have an answering service instead of just a machine you're leaving a Message, message after the beat. If there's an emergency, it'll it'll get they'll routed. They'll know how to route it. It'll get routed to somebody that can answer a question rather than just get answered the next morning. Obviously, we don't. I'm not. I'm not talking about like I left my lunchbox, but no, you know, if, I don't know where my kid is. is if there's an emergency, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, like I got home from work and my kid's not sitting here. Right. What did you? Who's gonna Who's gonna staff that? And is that gonna cost any additional money? Or it's actually you? like a doctor's answering service. It's a place in Butler. Yeah, no, but I'm saying who's gonna the page or the phone call is going to come to somebody you, you. It'll come to me. okay it goes to me the ba and the transportation director but only if they escalate it to that level only if it gets right. escalated like if and obviously have, it's got to be something else. i assume we they're ones that do this for other districts they do have two other school districts the guy said so right? do we have to make our own guidelines if it's this mm -hmm. escalate if it's not yeah. if we do our own or they I'll have a set no lunch boxes but something <laughs> like that's important we, yeah. we establish our own guidelines so is um how often Right now, do we have this issue where at four o'clock, it's five four thirty, and somebody's trying to find out, hey, where's my kid? I mean, how often, how many times per year would you estimate? I don't think we've, I don't think we've had that at all since I've been here. But there's been, there's, there have been other types, emergency type things that have come up, and um, through the survey, communication was an issue. So this, I think, is one one phase that trying to correct the communication issues that we've had. Um, I, and I don't, I don't think that we can say this is gonna, this is gonna solve like five things that happened. I don't know. I'm just, it, it was just something that I talked about and researched a little bit, talked to, um, talked to our transportation person and said, well, what do you think? Like, is this, does this make sense? It started to come to light to me when I realized, like, for example, 
my son, next year, he'll be in fifth grade. He'll probably get in the house by himself now. You know, most of the time, obviously, he's in the house and everything's fine. But what happens if he's not there when, by the time my wife gets home from work at 4, 402, right? Who does she call? The only mechanism she has right now, obviously, she called me, right? But, but let's if say it's somebody, somebody else. else's wife. Right. Yeah. <laughs> if it's anybody else, all they can do is call the police. Well, so can, that's why. I, was, I mean, I, the other suggestion I was going to make is, I mean, it's not a big expense in a $30 million budget, but it's 800 bucks. And could we talk to the police department? They staff a non-emergency desk 24 hours, seven days a week. Can we work with them and try to see if, if we can start off with that? If that doesn't meet it, be a solution, then we can go to spending money. I mean, just to avoid the 800 and some odd dollars. Well, I, the police would definitely take the calls. They would definitely, you know, they would definitely take the calls and send a patrol car and all that stuff. Um, if we don't have the, a big issue with it, and I understand it's a, sa a student safety issue, and I want to make sure we're doing the right thing, but uh, I mean, if we can work with the police department, we're trying to do a lot of collaborative work with them right now with the town. It, I, it's an option. I just don't out there. Well, I mean, the possibility is that we don't actually know what need there is actually yet. It may be a year from now we come back and yeah. say we got one phone call, we don't need it anymore. Right? We got no phone calls, maybe. Right. You, know, you do it for a year or two, and you get no phone calls, and you just well, say, no okay. No phone calls that rise. We know right now that people call and leave messages right. on they the do. machine. Right. <laughs> But not, nothing to the escalation part. But, of it. but, but you any know what? that rise to the level that we act. Even a, it, look, there's we've had several phone calls. Like I don't know where my kid's supposed to go tomorrow. To me, that's an emergency. I'll, we'll take care of that. If it, if if a parent called up and says, I don't even know what bus stop my kid's supposed to go to. I'll make sure that somebody gets the answer to them. I mean, if it's two o'clock in the morning, probably not. But if they if they call us, you know, till eight nine o'clock at night, we'll we'll get an answer so that they know. I'm sure if we, I'm sure the, the police desk, if you just said to them, hey, listen, call, call you, <laughs> I mean, they would call. It's just something to look into, that's all. I just wanted to throw it out there as an option that the only The only thing at. that I would, I think in theory it makes sense. The only thing that I would say is that I don't think the police department probably wants to get my lunch, my son left their lunchbox, which you know, we'll probably get those calls, right? Uh, lunchbox on the bus. Then we're, we're essentially saying that the parents got to decide whether or not it, it raises to a certain level of escalation. Uh, if it's this escalation, call the police. If it's not, just leave a message to beep type of thing. Yeah, if it's urgent, I mean, if somebody well, I thinks urgent is I lost my kid. lunchbox. Well, I'm that's right. certainly it. But there's other levels of urgency, I think, yeah. that may or may not rise to that level. I mean, I agree with you on. I agree with all. It, a little bit for a couple months and see yeah. if it right. becomes an issue. They're going to track the calls, how many, and maybe give us some type of uh, categorization of what they're about. Yeah. Maybe some of them may be the kids missing. Maybe something new about. Uh, you know. It's always hard to stop something when you should start it. Sure. So it's like pulling a band-aid off, even though you know there may be five people that used it, but those five people felt it was really important. So it, once you start it, I, I think it's going to be very difficult for us to, to stop. I, I like the idea of, of trying to see what sort of metrics we get from it. And if, if I think a year from now we look at it and we see it's not valuable, if we're not getting $800 worth, then I 100% agree with you, we find an alternative. But I almost feel like it's as a level of assurance and insurance on us. We signed a contract with them, it's a one-year contract? Yes, it is. I say, and I forgot to ask in committee, but I assume since this is coming out of analyzing the data we got from the transportation survey, we didn't budget for it, right? It's not specifically budgeted for, no. But we had funds in the transportation lines to pull this from? Yes, we do. So less transmission. <laughs> I don't think I can get a transmission for that, but okay. Transmission for less than bucks? <laughs> Anything else in the committee report for uh, transportation, Mariana? I believe that's everything. Right. Don, you want to take us through uh, B&G? Yes, uh, we did have a meeting tonight um, when we financed transportation. I'll just highlight some of the things we talked about. Uh, we talked about the summer projects. Uh, they're going along on schedule, uh, no problems, which is good. We uh, talked about improving the bus garage security with some, some cameras. Uh, we talked about tree maintenance up at Lakeview. Uh, we got a tree that could be a hazard hanging over the uh, playground, and we got a uh, very competitive uh, quote uh, from an in-town uh, person that you know operates a, a you know, tree cutting company for eight hundred dollars, which we, and we had a high bid of four thousand. So that's great that we're getting it done for a lot less money. Um, we already had on the agenda the uh, dual use, uh, resending that uh, Lakeview projects. We talked about the Lakeview drainage. Um, tech security, we have quotes in progress for that. Um, we discussed the sale of the old Board of Ed office of 501 Open Hockey, and uh, we, you know, we do now have a, uh, a minimum amount that we're going to sell for that will be on the agenda 
at the next meeting. And we also talked about the uh, the demographic room utilization study because um, we have you know some some new projects going on in town and some on the radar screen that I guess may or may not happen. But um, you're going to have the uh, you know, there's commuter apartments that are going to go in over um, Essling. by Essling Lake, and that's going to include some low-cost housing. Um, so you could get some kids out of that. We, you know, we had an estimate from the beginning when they talked about the project. Um, the uh, Redmond Press area there, uh, there's a proposal there to uh, put, a, it was 100 units? 55. 55 units. Okay, 55 units there. So that could also... Uh, result in some uh, additional kids into the school. Of He's not. Where's that? It's on Diamond Spring. Uh, it's on Route 53. As you go going out of town before oh, the town on the right, uh, right hand side. As you're going south on there, um, and I guess they're also looking at um, some other pieces of property in that uh, that vicinity across the street from Fruit Town, where the uh, Chinese restaurant is. The, ta the takeout. Yeah, well, what I was told. <laughs> so, um, and then uh, there was another, I don't know what the other piece of property would be. I guess it's zoned for uh, four, four houses, and uh, they're, they're, you know, I guess there's some, a quest for a variance there that could result in more, more cluster uh, units. So, um, I wasn't for the demographic room utilization study, but, um, you know, our, our student count's been going down over the last uh, five years or so, but um, if some of these uh, new complexes are built, it could cause an uptick in the uh, student population again. So we certainly would want to be uh, mothballing trailers if we may need them in the future to uh, house more students. So right now, most of them are before the planning board not approved. The only one that's approved and it's in the process of being built is Essing Lake. Lake right. So if they were to do a snapshot demographic study right now, they talk about things that are not potential. even approved by... Talk about potential, I think. Well, the last demographic study we had, Essling Lake was before the town council, but not approved. And I don't think it made the demographic study. I remember reading it in there. Is it? All right. At least some... Like a potential. It since then, but... There was something in there about it where they talked about 100 units and not many kids because it was so expensive or something. Yeah. And the other thing to keep in mind with this that, that we discussed is that uh, as an incentive to build in Denver, well, these uh, new locations would not pay any property taxes to the school for five years. So we're offering it would pay to the uh, municipality. So to build that's, in Denville? that's something else to keep in mind. That's the, I got to clarify that though. It's not. It's a it's a deferred. It's a, deferred. Yeah, a, a pilot. P-I-L-O-T stands for payment in lieu of taxes. When you have a pilot program, the, the state, the, um, the, the local taxes for the schools stay stagnant, meaning that the, the development of the property, the school district does not see, it, it can happen in all different forms. And the form we have right now in Essling Lake is that the, the increase in value of the property, the, the tax does not go to the schools. It goes to the town for five years. Then it goes to the schools like normal. Sometimes it goes to the, count, the town and the county. It can go to the schools. There's all different ways to do it. But it's, it's a way for towns to redevelop areas that were, are, are, I guess you could say, are unsightly or out, outlive their useful life at one time. And then they can redevelop it. So that's what it is. So just to make it clear, you still get the tax dollars from the property of the value of the property it is currently. But you don't get the increased revenue. The the town for the improvement. The Here's town does for five years. For the improved value of right. the building. Of the right. So, for example, if you had a property that was worth a million dollars as is, you'd still get the property tax on the million dollars. If you do a, if you do a redevelopment of it and now it's worth $10 million, you don't get the property tax on the new nine for five years in this particular case. But that can be all different years. It can be seven years. It can be five. It can be all different ways. And now, we as the board don't necessarily have a seat at that table to decide that. The town decides that. Oh, the concept. Oh, so the planning know. board and the, the planning board. board. Yeah. yeah, no, we don't have any we have say in it at all. We have no say in where those dollars go. Well, no. yes, A, we don't have any say in where those dollars go. Right now, the town hasn't 
approve them other than Esling Lake, sure. which at the point of our last demographic study, it listed it as concept only, and they didn't give us any numbers for students to plan. Yeah. Um, and so, and outside of the demographic study, though, this is a room utilization. I mean, considering we're getting rid of trailers and we're trying to. So, are we talking about schedules? the motions, or is he still in the oh, committee? I was asking, but I'm asking. Finance. But I was asking the question about it, though. Sorry, but this is not just demographics, though, right, Don? Yeah, it would include uh, space, demographics, and room utilization study. So, but from a, the other thing too, going back to the taxes, is St. Clair is going potentially going for profit, being sold to prime healthcare, could potentially increase tax revenue also. But they will be a taxable entity as opposed to a non-profit. label. Yeah. This is one positive. Any other parts done? That's it. And I'll, uh, I have a couple of uh, motions uh, to move here. Yes, uh, please. For building as the grounds. Number one, uh, we're gonna rescind the portion uh, below from the buildings and grounds motion regarding dual use that was approved June 22nd. The dual use is no longer needed for uh, room B14 at Lakeview School. And um, also we have a resolution to uh, authorize the settlement with the Yaga Energy Products LLC, formerly known as Agway. And um, I want to thank the uh, former BA and Steve for working hard on this to uh, not have us legally liable for this uh, cleanup of the, uh, the spilled oil, which, which would have been very expensive. So uh, that's going along very well, bringing that to uh, closure finally. We have a second for that? A second. Any questions, comments about uh, this portion? I know it's supposed to be kind of like uh, on their nickel. Do we need a not to exceed cost or something since you're in for a final say on this? Oh, which one? Sorry. The, uh, I don't know how to there say. is no the oil. Oil. The oil. As of this moment, there's not. But you mean you mean the remediation of Valley View? Yes. Well, Thank there's no. Are. There we didn't we didn't take the agreement where they would give us a number. No, I understand. So when they finish, assuming they get done next month, like the settlement is between you and legal. Like we don't know for certain what's going to happen until they finish. Well, it's got to be accepted by the board attorney and the superintendent. Right. So you're saying but there's no cost uh, listed. But I thought all these whereas is stated that Yagway agreed to undertake all the cleanup right. on their nickel. Right. And that it finishes when EPS we and the Department of Ed no Department of EPS. Environmental Protection. Environment, thank you. Says that it's actually cleaned up. Just like they just did with the board office. They had the final say that that was that site was finally cleaned up, right? Right. And we should probably say that this is obviously not complete at this point, exactly, right? The the settlement is the reason why we're doing it this way is due to the fact that if we want to get the work done this summer, we'd have to approve it tonight pending attorney review. I mean, so I guess the only thing in here that as a layperson you see that protects your, the thing that jumps out to me that protects us is that they took responsibility for, it doesn't ever say and will take responsibility for all the cleanup. I guess that's the next whereas. So I mean, I thought that was what, you know, our lawyers worked on this. Our lawyer wrote this. Yeah. This is what he said we have to pass to get to be protected have it done that they're that they're responsible right so there's no minimum whatever there should be nothing yeah it, it says jaguar will perform the following as it pertains to the fuel yeah. spill remediation. certain remediation cleanup and construction efforts of the value middle school pay for certain costs attributed to the i guess Real the question school. is certain cost i mean pay for all costs but yeah i mean is your concern it's, that it's that it's leaving it up to the board attorney and yeah, Mr. They, it's an unknown at this moment in time because they're not finished. But nothing in this says the board will take on any financial responsibility. No, I think right, that's my point. Maybe nothing. we should say that. They should say something like the board is not, you know, the, the number is zero, <laughs> not to exceed, so, exceed it's zero. It's a right. by omission. That point. So does that put you into a situation where you can't put down seed? Or well, something that like is the thing. I, I don't know. It just says that, you know, it's unknown at, as of this moment. 
I, I, risk I, assessment as well. I, I thought that the, I mean, this as I read it and the way I've understood it from sort of the beginning of uh, all the hard work that you guys have done was sort of to the degree that they would take on the responsibility of, of the spill to begin with and then also the remediation, the cleanup, and the get back to normal state. Yeah, right. exactly. So, I mean, maybe I'm not reading, maybe I'm well, not. We're going to have to vote on the settlement agreement. If you look at the last paragraph, it says the board attorney is hereby directed to prepare a settlement agreement in accordance with the terms of this resolution. The process terms are already available to the board attorney and superintendent. So, you know, maybe maybe you put the zero in there when the, when the final settlement agreement comes. I mean, it's more of an authorization to move forward with it. I asked him specifically if we could do any of the work or anything like that prior to board approval. He said, no, you have to do this first. Then you can settle on it. They'll do the work, and then you can whatever happens in the August meeting. They might have to do I, some other. I things would there. hope, but I am not a lawyer. But we pay our lawyer to protect the district, and if our lawyer wrote this up and he left us open and didn't protect the district from having to pay, I mean, I get that it's not said here and it's implied, but it's also not authorizing the expenditure of any funds on our part. Right. It's only authorizing. Yagway, who took responsibility for it to clean up. And, and I think we have a fairly clear um, um, position as a board that they're going to take on respons responsibility from start to finish, and our attorney and our superintendent wouldn't necessarily agree to something the board hasn't directed them to in one way or another, right? Yeah. Okay. So knowing that, he would have to come back and say, I agreed to something that's outside of the, the board's approval. You know, the attorney and I have been working on this day and day and day in and out on this so uh, well, i mean there's our expense yeah. it's not on the remediation yeah, right. it's on yeah. the legal fees no, always, that's always, <laughs> always yeah we won't we will be responsible for some legal fees but the uh, eighty thousand dollar budget that we had to repeat to, to do this should is definitely not going to be eighty thousand dollars and the um the the good part is something that the expenses we've already laid out other than other than legal fees is part of the settlement, so they will be reimbursing. They're reimbursing us, and and basically one of the reasons is because the things that we did, they would have to do anyway. So they can take our data and actually make decisions based on that, like the subsurface exploration they have to do. Um, they did, they did that. We did all these different DEP requirements that we have to do. So um, what we should expect to have a decent reimbursement plus no out, no cost out except for any legal fees and they're going to use the same lsrp that we would have too so we're pretty confident that well you remember when i spoke to everybody and said i would only agree to the settlement if we all decided to hire french and perillo and bello our lsrp to oversee the project and the good news was the insure the the company yagwe decided to use the two people that we've been using already for a period of time that I feel very comfortable with and I've had a history <laughs> with. So I didn't feel the need to have to hire them, a different person, to oversee the people that I wanted to choose in the first place, if that makes sense. Yep. Okay? Yep. Any other questions on this section? Mariana, you were the second, right? Yes. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Adamson? Yes. Mr. Capello? Yes. Mrs. Lindsay? Yes. Mr. Cass? Yes. Mrs. DeLuna? Yes. Mr. Napoloni? Yes. Finance part. You want to take us through this part, please? Yeah, I guess based on history and conversations uh, tonight, I, I would propose we take four and five out of the block and talk about them separately. Um, but I, we also met in uh, finance just prior to this and um, went over the agenda items. All the new work chart, the, uh, Did you guys have the committee report or no? Uh, nothing formal. We just met just tonight. So um, Kathy's like uh, working on all the health, the switch to the state plan. That was part of the uh, settlement agreement. Um, and we were just saying that there's only a handful that haven't um, finished the paperwork, but they would be covered retro, you know, so for the score, the school year. Hopefully everything's ready by September. Um, and then, as Damaris mentioned, the auditors have arrived for year-end 
things. They've done the enrollment and transportation pieces, and they'll start the finance stuff in August. Um, we also talked about uh, reviewing petty cash procedures, possible future revisions to that. Um, so regarding today's agenda, yeah, I think four and five um, we should just take out of the block. And then, so I'll make a motion to do items one, two, three, six through 11 on the agenda as a block. I'll second it. All right, um, there are meeting some of the year-end, the budget transfers and the finance bills and warrant reports, um, field trip requests, energy, energy consulting. That was a, yeah, a separate thing we got in a Friday folder. The new legal for special ed matters, the drainage that we talked about, B&G for Lakeview. And additional pavement at Valley View, summer work. Um, yeah, this is summer projects. The bus garage, the drainage at the bus garage collapsed. And some professional development for the admin over the summer. Any other questions, comments, about the one through three and six through 11? Um, so either you answered my question about number six for the uh, ESIP um, proposal that cost us to not exceed fifteen thousand. Right, it's not so. It's fifteen thousand dollars. It, it's a pretty set rate due to the fact that of what what they're doing, okay. and it's required to do the ESIP. You have to do this, okay. um, and it does get rolled into the cost of the project, meaning it's budget neutral. It'll it'll be part of the whole ESIP project, which Same is thing. funded through the reduction in the use of utilities. And I have a question about some of the paving. Maybe I should ask this in buildings and grounds, but I know when we did a lot of the paving work we're doing now, the uh, LFRP kept talking about making sure that we do all the markings, ADA compliant, and all the lines that we're drawing, all the signs. Is that all done to those standards? Are we, sure. kind of, are we clear there now? Like, are we yeah, clear? yep. Okay. It's all, uh, actually, all the lining is done. Yeah, but it's yeah. to the standards that yep. the LFRP kept talking about. Yeah. Okay. Yep. The other thing I was wondering about with the legal, we're not limited to special ed matters, right? If we had like the conflict with the Board of Ed, the town hall. Yeah, that's a, that's a good, I didn't even think of that. We're not limited to special ed. Right, I like that. Not to yeah, that means I could use, and it's yeah. just says special counsel. So when we have conflicts, like we have the same attorney as the town, if we need an attorney to do any kind of legal things with the town, we always have to use the town's other attorney our personnel attorney and your personnel attorney is the same so that's a good that's a good point i didn't even think of so that's a that's another value to that i would just note too that um if you look at item two it, it looks like a big number on uh on the second batch of checks uh, or bills and and warrants for 2015-16 a lot of those are just for clarification for the public a lot of those are initial outlays um, at the beginning of the year so uh, for software and licenses and everything so a lot of they're all budgeted for um, but uh, a lot it's just a bigger number than I was used to I know I went through a lot of the uh, items on the bills list and uh, got some clarification from uh, Steve on uh, on all those items so just wanted a point of clarification yeah, too, with the transition, we thought whatever John could get done before yeah. he left, you know, kind of like loaded him up to the very end. Yeah. So that was appreciated. Yeah. Any other questions, comments? Roll call, please. Uh, this is again, this is one through three and six through 11. Mr. Adamson? Yes. Mr. Capello? Yes. Mrs. Lindsay? Um, yes, but I will abstain on motion number two from the July bills list on check number six, five, Eight five nine. What, Mr. Cass? Because yes. my son works for the company. Mrs. Deluna? Yes. Mr. Napoloni. Yeah. Yes. Um, you want to revisit uh, four and five now, Barb? Yeah. So um, item four is the professional services for renovations at the Denver Municipal Building. Um, it's Cara Rabina, not to exceed forty-eight hundred dollars. Um, so I just thought we should have discussion on this because, um, you know, Steve was on vacation last time and we didn't really get to talk about it as a whole board, but, uh, 
uh, I have reservations about spending more money on, uh, I don't, unless, uh, oh, so you're moving motion four, you need a second itself. before you can talk about yeah. it. Yeah. As a, by itself. Do I have a second? Second. Seconding? Yeah. Second. Okay, my second. So, I thought it would be good to just pull it to have a discussion on it before we vote. I agree. So I actually thought we would have more of a discussion in buildings and grounds, and please excuse me if I yeah, it was kind of rough. if I fell asleep during the meeting and I missed it. <laughs> but um, I guess some of the questions we had were that we have spent money before um, on architect fees that put the putting us in that building in the neighborhood of what was it close to two hundred thousand dollars? Two hundred fifty-two thousand. Two hundred fifty. Fifty-two. Okay, and so part of the reason why that wouldn't be appropriate now as a starting point is because we think we won't have to move. I want to, just as a point of clarity, we don't think we're going to move as many staff members there. The way I understood the, and you could clarify if, I, if I'm wrong here, but the way I understood that the way that the drawings were done before involved a whole lot of space that we wouldn't be, I guess, utilizing now, plus the way I understood the, uh, the drawings from before included a whole bunch of I mean, fairly large offices and walls and, and things like that that we wouldn't be needing this time. I mean, you tell me if I'm wrong, but I, they seem to be different. Yeah, if you read the the last one, you'll see. If you if you read the square footage amount that they're talking about, they're, they're talking about the renovation of the the entire. What would that be? Uh, west side Upstairs. of the second floor. So. That's when you come up the stairs on the left. Yeah, so I felt like. I'm not good with mine. I mean, after, after reviewing the drawings and meeting with the architect and speaking with the town several times, it's really only a matter of what we need is the north, the southwest corner, which would be the left, the left of the left, if you're looking at it. You're, look, you're, facing, you're facing the parking lot, the left side, and then the left side of that. So it's so, still the left-hand side when you come up. It's just the first row. And I mean, it was my understanding when I sat with the town and the board in the town sat at the table and we had those plans built up. It was because they were going to renovate their side, we were going to renovate our side, we were going to share costs, shared services, we were going to split the bill and blah, blah, blah. So now we'll just do our side. Mm -hmm. We're still looking at the same area. So my question would be, um, as Mr. Cass brought up earlier, the reason we're not moving as many staff members over there is because we think we're putting them somewhere else? Well, the, the, uh, the plans from the original drawing back in a few years ago were uh, to move 10 people over there. The, the, the discussion, and that's why four and five are intertwined, would be to move um, the central office function of the, special, of the superintendent, assistant superintendent, and business department, which would be seven people over there, and find space for the special services department in one of the schools, namely um, Lakeview, hopefully Lakeview. And there'd be costs to reconfiguring our space there too? There'd be some costs moving to moving the uh, special services department into Lakeview, I'm sure. I think there would be, you know, I, I can't tell you for sure because I don't have the information on where the, the with the un room utilization study, like five. Um, I, I think a good solution would be to do five, put four on hold, until five comes in to make decisions on four. That would make sense to me. I left both of them on there because I think they're, they're both intertwined. And, 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 and if, you, if uh, so do you want to do that, I think if five doesn't pass, I don't see any need to do four. Yeah, what, when I looked at the, uh, the old prints to refresh my memory, I, I've been wondering if we need this many officers. You have mm -hmm. uh, one, two, three, four, five officers. Well, it's uh, obviously, the, you know, the superintendent, the assistant superintendent need, need uh, an office. Um, Isn't it four, Tom? Five. I got one, two, three, four, one? five, based on the blueprint I'm looking at. Point to the fifth one. Six copies. One, two, three, four, five. That, that one's not, uh, that, that one in the top right, that's, that's, the, that's the, the, the north side of, the, of, the, of that side. No, that's the old uh, plan. It's the old office. Yeah, that wouldn't be, that wouldn't be, that's still He's their side. the old one has that. Yeah, but it's not, that's not our side. We, I have, don't, we, don't, we don't have a print of our side. Our, yeah, side our side's the, the left side. side. Draw a line down the middle of the thing. Our side's the left side. Um, over here. So that's yeah. the town? Or was the town? The left side would be us, the right side would be the town. So the town's not, at this point, the town's not interested in refurbing anything up there and moving anybody into there. Well, they, now. they, they still have people up there now? 
I'm asking. I don't, I don't. They have uh, on the left side. They have one person's office, one one cubicle. Well, what about the, uh, the cr across the hall? That was the nurses' area, the health area, which had, there was a confidentiality issue. So if they move that, you, you know. I mean, so that's still in use? That's across the hall, yeah, it wouldn't be. That's wouldn't not in play right That was the bigger area. That was report. the bigger area if we chose that. So now it's only the left side. Right. Is that going to be enough? One, two, well, for three, seven four people. And you for seven got four people. offices and you got one, two, three, four cubes. You need three offices and four cubicles. That's what you would need. And, and where are they going to put all your filing cabinets and everything? I mean, we it, 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 may, you know, it may be worth the money to have the, you know, since we're not going to need as many offices as to have this re-scoped out and see if the uh, the space is adequate um, for it to support, you know, minus these special ed staff. I mean, it, it looks like if you don't have anything on the right side, it looks like a real, real tight area. You have you have some storage space and you have the attic storage space, but you're right. Most likely, for our long-term files that we have now in the basement at 400 Mars, we would need something like that again. So it's not going to does this definitely does not solve all of our issues, but um, it's a it's a I think it's a um, a reasonable um, accommodation for us, and and the cost is great because the town the town and I are working on an agreement where there really won't be a, a yearly or a monthly fee. It'll just be the outlay of whatever we do for renovations. We would have to pro probably uh, uh, lease some storage. We'd still need to lease the storage. Now. And I already spoke to our, our landlord. He said he would, even if we moved out of that building when the lease was over, he would continue to lease us that, that storage space we have. So we would st we'd still need some kind of off-site storage. I mean, this goes sort of to that next sort of question, which is that we would be doing something in anticipation of the potential of moving into Town Hall to begin with. And we spend something like fifty-five thousand a year or so about in that, rent, yeah. not including the the extra space. Um, and if we were talking about an agreement that lasted twenty years, plus or minus, uh, I mean, we could see a savings. If even if it costed two hundred thousand dollars, I mean, we could see a start seeing a savings within five years easily. I mean, well, it depends then, on how much the other cost is for putting the special ed department somewhere. Right. So even if you know. I don't know what the worst case scenario is. I certainly don't think it's going to cost $200,000 or 250 So I don't know what Robert's rules of order are for what Mr. Forte suggested. Barb, are you amenable to postponing the vote on four till you move and vote on five? Yeah. Well, she didn't actually move five yet. She only no, four. That, but Mr. Forte yeah. asked to postpone the vote on four and vote on five first. I, I said I don't know uh, if we officially have to table what we opened or if could we just... Say we're going to postpone that vote till after we do the other one. And and both four and five are, are in the approved budget, both both numbers, and it's not over the the budgeted amount. Do you have a? Yeah, I, I you know I just think looking at this and you know I don't see Fog have I I just think if you really have a professional look at look at that space there and see how you can configure everybody in there. Um, well, I think what, what the cost would be, but also um, you know what's involved to move the uh, special ed staff to a another location and I guess a projected lease cost for the file cabinets at the uh, uh, where you're at right now and the the other the demographics I, I think you need to get a, get a little more a definition and a clarification from the town on where some of these All right, uh, well, we can't talk about five until it's moved well so uh, Barb do you want to table uh, four and then make a motion for five and then we can go Are back to four? For the week? No, for like no, for a, 20 minutes till we talk about five. Out. That's why I said, can we just put it on pause? What? Or Yeah. Uh, All right, let's undo the motion. Well, I don't know what Robert's rules of order, but let's just let's pause just, it and. Let's just assume tabling the uh, motion is there. Without all the voting. Five. Yeah, so, do you want to make a motion for number five? <laughs> yes, I'd like to make a motion that the board um, vote on resolving. Parts one and two of the Ross Haber Associates LLC study proposal for a total of five thousand dollars. Mike, did you want to second that one again? No, I'm going with second. Oh, you're done. Any second for that? I'll second it. <laughs> so, for the record, this motion was before the board last meeting, and four people voted against it, so the motion failed. This motion was, as Mr. Forte said spoken about it budget time and four board members then also said they didn't want to include it in the budget but it was included and it was put before us to vote and he's coming forward with new information about the 
demographic study, which up until Mr. Anderson pulled out the last demographic study, I was almost willing to split the demographic study from the room utilization study since we just spent $5,000 on a room utilization study. But that's but not... the demographic study that was done at the time before the Essling Lake thing, when it was just proposed, doesn't give us anything to... Really so if we do it right now based on there's a whole bunch of things being asked of the town and they could say no to all of them, these numbers aren't going to help us at all. So I'm still firmly against spending $5,000. So I wonder, Steve, if uh, when they do the study, do they give us a um, anticipated and potential yes. type of, so it's not just one number. No, yeah, there's a potential. And I just want to clarify what, what Mrs. Lindsay just mentioned, that there was a room utilization study. There was a, a study of the middle school schedule done, not, not a district-wide room utilization study, which this is a little different than that. One thing is about scheduling. One thing is about how how do you most efficiently use your your all three of your buildings, which is what we pay our administrators for. I don't know if I agree with that. I, I mean, look, th this to me, this is a strategic thing. If if this doesn't pass, right, then my strategy changes. My strategy changes to you know I can't make these kinds of decisions based on what I think because. I'm not, I'm not an expert in these fields. So to hire an expert to decide something that's long-term and it has a big expenditure behind it, to me, makes sense. Now, I obviously have seven, six people here tonight and they have to decide. If, if you decide not to do it, my strategy changes a different way of what I'm gonna recommend. There's, there's really no other way of putting it. So if, if five doesn't go, you know, if five doesn't go, might as well forget four because I can't make those decisions based on, based, based on, uh, without having five. I, I don't think it's as simple as saying that we had a demographic study three years ago or so, and you know, listen, we we um, the board, however many years ago, voted or tried to vote on putting a seventy million dollar school in town based off of, you know, some anticipated something and. You know, I, I don't remember exactly, so I'm not going to say you know, what was done or what was not done or wh why the decision was made or not decide, decided, but I'm sure that, or I hope that, the board at that time had come to the conclusion based off of some up-to-date information. Now, we're not talking about a $70 million school. We are talking about trailers. We are talking about moving staff. We are talking about potentially saving the district dollars for going to uh, the board, to uh, the municipal building. Um, and we're talking about some other utilization studies that I would imagine that go beyond just you know those sort of capital parts of it. I mean, imagine that it would include, you know, how to, uh, you know, you do more room sharing and things like that too. Uh, in addition to the idea that you know where we are today and what the town's proposing of, of adding into the district or into the town is different than what it was a year ago. I, I think it it's prudent when we talk about potential big expenditures to spend a, a certain amount to make sure we're doing it the right way. And Mariana, I hear what you're saying about you know we hire administrators to do that, but. You know, we just hired a vice principal and we have principals. I've seen your resume, and I don't remember once in there being anything about being a, uh, a room utilization or a demographer in there at all, specialist. When we have a, uh, a tech team and a tech specialist because they're not specialists in those areas, they're not experts there. I mean, we have you know, managers and administrators to do the overseeing, but we hire experts and we bring in specialists to advise us and counsel us on doing the right thing for the district. I don't think it's as simple as saying that that's their job then don't hire any of these other people. It doesn't make any sense. I don't think it's as simple as that. We have to make a decision that is in the, in the broader context of trying to do the right thing for the district. Like I said, we have a two and a half year old demographic study. I'd be willing to pay money for an updated demographic study, which may or may not give us the numbers we're looking for based on all these possible things that the town may say no to all of them. But, so, I mean, here's, here's the thing, too. When you look at the demographic study from two and a half years ago, the development impact is small. It's like two kids per class. I mean, unless we think the town's going to build this massive, you know, structure somewhere, which I don't know where the heck they're going to build it because there's not a lot of space left to build, and I don't hear anybody in the town talking about buying a piece of property to try to build a huge complex, it, the numbers on that don't seem to have as big an impact. Yeah. Um, and uh, I mean, I, I wanted to get clarification on exactly what the goal of the study was. And my understanding is, so correct me if I'm wrong, 
but you, you want to look at remutilization, where we're going to be in the next five years, is it? Sure. Um, and look at basically one of the big uh, questions out there is what are we going to do with these trailers at all the schools? And is it appropriate? Now that we're decreasing enrollment, we know that in two years, I think it is, we can totally be out of the trailers, one or two years, yeah. um, based upon the enrollment we have right now. But does that mean we get rid of the trailers? Does that mean we keep them just in case something happens? Um, that's my understanding. Is that is that what we're talking about and where we're at with what you're looking to get out of it? Sure. I mean, um, we're at the point where we had years, years ago, 10, 11 years ago, decisions were made to come up with temporary solutions. Those temporary solutions have been here for 11 years. Like, is it, it's time to decide whether or not we can actually demolish these things. If we, if we have enough space where we don't have to have shared classrooms, and, and I don't mean a shared classroom the way you would think, like at period five, the social studies teacher's in there, and then period six, the Spanish teacher's, and that's not what I mean. What I mean is in, in our schools, in both elementary schools, we have classrooms where you have a speech teacher in there teaching a speech lesson while there's basic skills going on on the other side of the room, which is difficult because the, the kids that we're talking about now are your most needy type kids that need to hear and listen and then when they have distractions on the other side. So again, a lot of, a lot of short term decisions were made 10, 11, 12 years ago, but they're still here. And we have to be able to make, I think we have to be able to make sound decisions going forward of what are we going to do with this? Because those trailers weren't free. You know, those trailers cost a lot of money and the installation of the trailers, there's sewer lines, there's gas lines, there's all these different utilities in those trailers. It's not just a matter of going to, you know, out to, uh, out on, out in Route 80 and in, uh, in uh, what's it called, Pennsylvania, and plopping one of those trails in there. It's a pretty big process. It all has to be handicapped accessible, the ramps, all that. So where are we with that? Do we leave them there? Do we pretend that it's okay to just have temporary storage, temporary space here in case we need it again in the future? So all these things are kind of intertwined, and we have to make decisions based on what I think, you know, facts, the best facts you could possibly have at the time. So interestingly right. enough, you bring up that the board made decisions 10, 11 years ago based on a demographer's report that said when, they just, when the board decided not to go for the building of a new school but for trailers, it was because the demographer's report said you're going to climb, 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 especially in the middle school, and then your enrollment's going to decline, 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 which is exactly what's happening. And, I mean, a year ago we were told looking at the demographer's report that is in front of Mr. Anderson now that's two and a half years old, that at this rate of decline, we would be out of the trailer. So it was a temporary solution for a temporary problem, not a permanent solution for a temporary problem. That's why we didn't build, we put trailers. So I understand wanting an updated demographer's report because now what was told to us 10 years ago is actually happening, but what's happening after that? I get that which was what the update two and a half years ago was supposed to do, and it continued to say the same thing. Like I said, I understand wanting that possibly. I mean, I, I spoke at the last meeting about looking out strategically with the district and looking out on a long-term plan, and I look at things like these as what we need to do. I mean, roof studies and field studies, and I know it's all money going out of the district, but if we take that data and we really use it, and we look at the LRFP, and we look at these studies that we're gonna get, and we come up with a true strategic, long-term plan for the district, then we will have a Bible, so to say, that is, is, a, is a, uh, a kind of a vision for the district over the long-term. And so, I mean, that's, I think that's what we're trying to get out of it. And I think that's where the vision for the, the board should be. So, I mean, I, I support kind of doing these types of long-term projections. I understand some people's concerns. I think that um, more importantly is the, is the room utilization and the understanding of the entire district and where we're gonna use the rooms, how we're gonna use the field, how, what's gonna happen with the roofs, um, things like that. So I, I, I understand where, where that long-term strategy plan is coming into play. I think the important part for us is once we get all this data, we have to do something with it instead of just piling it up and looking at it once and then put it on the shelf and pulling it back out two and a half years later and looking at it. I think we really got to come up with a plan moving forward and we talked about that last month. Well, you remember one of the things that pushed this was the fact that we really need to spend about $30,000 on the value view awning for the trailers or demolish it and just not have an awning. But, you know, do we want to make decisions about spending that kind of money on a temporary solution? And are we at the point where we're, we're confident 
going by three and a half year old data or two and a half year old or whatever it is, that we're going to demolish these trailers someday, that they're going to get discarded and then we're never going to need them again or whatever it is. So that's why I'm, that's why I'm strongly backing that we have somebody in here that has years and years of expertise. I know I shared his website with you 